And we are live. The August 16th, 2013 edition of Accountants, Bookkeepers, and Business Owners. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And I see Roxanne has made it on. And Hi, Roxy. Can you for a while? How you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah. Here I need a QuickBooks account. Do you know one? <laughs> <laughs> I know a few. How are you guys doing? Good, good. So I'm standing in for Seth today. He's a little under the weather, but we want to uh, wish Seth well and hope he gets better soon. Get better, Seth. Yeah, yeah. So does anyone want to talk about what's happening in their business world today? Have you been following that thread on the Sleater Group about... Uh, Disconnecting phone support for QBOA. Disconnecting phone support. Oh, I've not followed the thread, but I saw that it was happening, that it's now being replaced with chat. Chat, yeah. Okay. Tell us some more, Dennis. Well, I would just kind of, people were, how you should I say, sort of undelighted about the whole thing, you know, in terms of uh, takeaways that are happening within to it, you know, charging you for... Uh, Put that back up and the mobile apps. Right. Didn't I hear so, yesterday though that they are backtracking? They're are they? actually not taking it away. They're saying it was a mistyping. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, up to it if you made a mistake. Well, the original <laughs> memo said hey, we heard your feedback and we're going to disconnect the phone support. I'm thinking, what the hey? <laughs> I actually don't mind chat. I, I like, like chat. Support. I've used chat support a lot, and that's my preferred method. I agree. Uh, yeah, you can put it up there. Written, and you can go back and redo that process anytime you need to. Yep. Yeah. So I it's like. Good unless it's something really complicated that you can't really explain oh, in writing. First you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then you need an error, but otherwise it's, yeah, it's good. I like the option though. I agree. So Dennis, you posted on um, the community uh, Doug Sleater's article on early adopters and and um, supporting applications that work with QuickBooks. What you think? I, pardon me. <laughs> what you think about the subject? Well, I was reading the one about uh, the consulting and how you had to be always uh, educating yourself as to the best, you know, practices, and that you don't want to just give your advice without thinking because, you know, he had the example of recommending or checking out a vendor and the he really wasn't, and so it kind of reflects on you. So you really have to be careful what you say. Well, coming from a former accounting office, I always thought that accountants were afraid to recommend anything um, for that very reason. So generally what they do is throw it back to the client and say, here are three sources you can go look, you go do the research, and you pick. Yeah. Um. It is kind of a, in a way, it's kind of a cop out. But on the other hand, it's, you know, you can't be knowledgeable about everything. And so, I guess it kind of depends on the client, in terms of how knowledgeable you think they are. That's true. But I think I'm going to start adopting Seth's approach, which he says all of his clients go on Bill.com. Whether if they're going to hire him as an accountant. That's what he's using, that's what he knows, and that's what he's had the best success with. Just yeah. get over it and just use what you know. I yeah. love build.com. Yeah. Why do you have a problem with build.com? Pardon me? Bruce, didn't you have a problem with Bill.com where there was a payment or something that got lost in trying to reconcile I, it? I did have an issue with Bill.com, but it wasn't Bill.com's fault. Oh, well, that's encouraging. Um, Build.com actually provided the exact information, so 
that the vendor could locate the payment, and the vendor was too damn lazy, excuse me, too big <laughs> to take the time to mess with trying to locate the payment. Right. So and for seven months, I would get the bill with that missing payment on it, and I would repeatedly not pay the bill and not, you know, I'd just pay for what I was actually needed to. And it finally got to such a large interest penalty wise that they finally called me up and said, what is the problem? And I said, well, and I read off, because when they do it, I mean, they take ticket numbers on the issue. I read off all the different ticket numbers. I said, I've already paid this. I've already provided the information so you can find the payment. So, But in other them. words, what you're saying, there was a problem, and Bill.com on their end was supportive. They were very supportive. Not only that, but they provided me with information so I could slap my vendor in the head. <laughs> That's always fun. So I have a question for you since you use Bill.com. Do you know if they do foreign transactions? I have no idea. I don't think they do. Okay. I don't, I, I, I'm with Dennis. I don't believe they do, but I don't have any foreign clients that are outside the United about, States. I haven't seen anything about multi-currents or anything like that. Well, either in the United Kingdom or I have some clients in, that, that work with people in South America and they do wires back and forth all the time. Yeah, I want to say no. I don't recall. I don't think they do, but I'm not positive. Okay, okay. I need to check that out before I can recommend it or I will end up like the client that... Yeah. <laughs> you <need the> trouble. <laughs> I am not afraid of doing research a little bit. <laughs> wow, it sounds like an airplane. Somebody's taking off. Actually, it sounds like an airboat. Oh? So we're going boating? I'm not. Ah, darn. I wish I was. <laughs> it's kind of fun today. Beautiful here. Like, it almost feels fall-like here. It feels extremely fall here. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cloudy today up in Seattle. I kind of like to hear uh, Rhonda's ongoing saga with the SEO. You wanna you wanna expand on I'm, that? I'm well, sorry. the one where they doubled the price or whatever. No, oh, yeah, <laughs> I actually um, told her that. Um, you know, because our current workload is fairly hefty, we actually um, did not continue with her. I told her that there may be a possibility in the future, but um, Brad and I have kind of decided that we're going to just continue doing what we're doing and see how that works. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I did lower our AdWords. Um, rate or um, what is it budget and I did that about a week ago and lo and behold um, I did check it yesterday we are still number one in Google um, that will change right. but that'll change I expect it to change so i um, while that's great right now um, you know it, it may change and that's only for kitchen remodeling in Orange County I didn't I only checked bathroom remodeling Orange County and we are about four and we never have um, done that great with bathroom remodeling. So kitchen remodeling is my main thing, anyways. Mm. Um, and I told I told her that I have no problem, um, you know, possibly continuing in the future with her. I did like her services. She did do a good job. Um, I didn't really get any um, further with her. I didn't really question anything at the time. Mm. Um, I figured. Let me sit on it for a little bit and see how she does, and then maybe go back to her and ask, are you cutting me a check, Bruce? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take one of them if there's a... I know. A couple zeros on it? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, anyways, so yeah, um, you know, it didn't actually turn out to be as bad as I thought it would be. I, I was... Um, but I'm just continuing to do what I have been doing in the past, um, and nothing's really going to change. And so what we'll see how. What did she um, say? What was her she, comment? She actually, um, being in the position that she's in, she actually turned it around and she did um, a post saying 
hey, look at me. I, I'm doing so, you know, our client did so well. She doesn't need us anymore. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, so that was a little odd, but, um, yeah. <laughs> um, so we're, um, we're continuing to do, you know, just limited. Um, Brad and I were getting so many calls that we really had to weed a lot of them out anyways, and so what's the point? Yeah, it doesn't make sense to spend money if you can't support yes. fill the demand. Yeah, I mean, and what we, what actually what I was doing is I have a hard time letting a lead go because that's, you know, what I work hard for is, is I, you know, sit here day in and day out. Bruce is saying hi, Brad. Um, All right. And um, how did you just say that in one conversation? Um, but yeah, so we're basically we've kind of changed our our theory too on just how we're um, going about our leads and things like that. So we're not taking on as much. Um, but my biggest problem is is when a lead does call in, I have a hard time of like not just wanting to take the call and schedule Brad to go out because you know it's work and you always you never know when your work's gonna come back so I tend to refer them to another contractor and hopefully you know that contractor can help them so that's where I'm at with that well good and her comment to you is interesting too okay give her that but this was it, it wasn't negative. I mean, I don't know if anybody's had any experience with people coming back and, and saying negative things about them, whether, you know, it's... No, she got all positive stuff, you know, like, oh, good, look what you did. Oh, you must be really good, you know. You, you know, so it was like a plug in her court, you know, right. where... Yeah. Which, she's in the business to do that. I mean, I do, if a client sends me a message or whatever, I'll post it. You know, going, hey, look what our customer just said. Do I post any negative ones? No. <laughs> now, you know, but... The only really negative I ones know. to post are the ones that are starting out negative and then you resolve them and show how great you did in the process of it. Right. But sometimes I don't even do those because people that start negative don't ever get better. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to um, agree with you. Yeah. You know, even if, if it started off negative and you did solve it, but there was still that negative feeling, they're still pushing off that vibe. Right. So it's and not... It um, yeah, yeah. So. And it was fantastic to hear that you actually recommend other contractors. That's, to me, that's a good business ploy. I do, because you know what? I would only want the same thing if it was happening to me. Um, um, especially since I'm in the business and I know what's good and bad. I mean, these people are locating me and they're liking our work. So there's a reason they're contacting us. So and, and what's the chance of the person coming back to you later because you helped them, where if you said, oh, no, I can't help you, bye. Yes, it has happened. And it has happened. Plus the other contractors might... Refer kitchen well, work. I just said, hey, I just talked, I talked to yeah. Travis and, they, and I could, They're I could, nice, I could, nice to us. They'll send us gift cards or whatever. So we always benefit. And he goes, well, shampoo. Perfect. Perfect. I tend to do the same thing myself. If I can't help someone, they have a need, and I'll send them to someone else that I've dealt with. And that's why you want to have a network. Yeah, I see. Exactly. I used to do POS, but I don't anymore, and so um, I get so those to I just refer them to a friend of mine that does POS, you know, and he refers tax clients to me, so. Works out for everyone. Yeah. You get to do what you like to do, and they get to do what they like to do. Yeah, I mean, you can't be all things to all people. You have to kind of, it's constantly trying to focus, 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 you know. Right, right. But I think and the other thing for us is, is, you know, if it's a job that maybe we it's too small or something, and I can refer it out to a smaller company, a smaller business, um, then you know I'm helping everybody out. And there's always Aaron left the kitty. Yeah. Um. Um. But yeah, it you know that way it's just one big happy family basically. And yeah, and they make it kitchen work. Yeah, we had it. We had it. You. Okay. 
Did I lose everyone? No, we're all here. Okay. I, did I got I got muted, but I'm muting anyways. I got background. Okay. So is there anything anyone else would like to talk about? Um, I I listened to the recording of uh, uh, the contractor. Nancy's recording. QuickBooks for contractors. Yes. Uh, Yes, um, and I was hoping Nancy would be in today. She mentioned that um, you know attachments that you put in the field they go in a special folder. And okay. Yes. I was wondering. I was wondering. Did that include also um, items that you might put in your scanner and scan in and attach to the job? Roxanne, do you know inside? Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Um, for QuickBooks, when you're backing up your file in the data file, the QuickBooks data where the company file is kept, if you back up your QuickBooks, you also need to back up the additional files that Larry's talking about, the attachment file, um, like fixed asset manager and that kind of thing. Right. So, Larry, your question is, if you scan things into your computer and attach them to QuickBooks, are they all in that file? Is that what you're asking? Hmm, we've lost Larry. Yes. Do you know the answer, no, Roxanne? When you scan them in, if you're attaching them to QuickBooks, that's the document management thing is a separate file. So you want to make sure that that is also tagged for backup. And if you're using some other program, you want to make sure that the, whatever the folder is, you want to make sure it's tagged here, for backup. Talk to the next people. If you're using like Mosey or Carbonite or whatever it is you're using, it's not part of just when you back up QuickBooks. Right, it's not part of the backup process when you actually do QuickBooks. It's held in the same file location as your QuickBooks data file. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> in the default location, we'll say. So that yeah, means it's in that. two places, right? So you have it to where you originally scanned it in whatever filing system you keep on your computer. And then when you attach it within QuickBooks, it also files it elsewhere. So you kind of do have a backup in that sense. Yeah, but I think they're both to your desktop. If you scan it into what, using your scan, whatever program scanner that you have, you would have to put it somewhere, I would think either on your desktop or in your documents on your computer. Right. So it's on your desktop. And I believe that that attach me file is the same. It's now kept on your desktop as opposed to in the cloud. Right. That seems reasonable. Local. Right. So both of those files then really are on the computer. So it's important to have that computer backed up. Well, and I think most people do. I mean, I do. I, I you know, back up my local hard drive. You would think too. most people do, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's still one of the number one things that's not done. Yeah. I agree, Roxanne, I agree. And then the other thing that you need to do if you back up is make sure it is restorable. I know a lot of people that have thought that they were backed up until time came that they found out that it did not work properly, they were not capturing the files that they thought they you know, wanted or needed, and now it's too late. You need to restore and there's nothing there. So yes, I agree, backup is, is vitally important. Does that kind of answer your question, Larry? Um, um, I'm still a little uh, concerned because I have a, a neat, a neat scanner. Okay. And I, I kind of wish I didn't get get that brand. It's not working out too good, but it has its own 
has its own folder for storage, but uh, I I've, I've looked a couple of times on a few. I did a few test runs, and I can't find it in QuickBooks anywhere. So <laughs> you've attached the file to QuickBooks. Yes, and and do you know where your QuickBook? Are you using your QuickBooks on just a computer or network? Um, well, I have two computers. It's a, uh, that I'm using QuickBooks on. Okay. Um, the laptop and the desktop. And okay. uh, well, I guess as you guys know, I'm not having uh, I'm not having good luck with this laptop. So maybe it has something to do with yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to ask you then, which computer are you attaching the files on? Are you use because it's local well, to the computer? Yeah, actually. Yeah, actually, I tried it on both. Uh, one, I tried uh, QuickBooks uh, 2012 on the desktop, and the other one was uh, QuickBooks 2013 on this laptop. And uh, it didn't. I I can't find where it's actually attached to QuickBooks. Okay, Roxanne, help me out. I'm going to try and give you the path of the normal. Um, company data file. So if you look on your C drive and then you go to users, then you go right. to public users or shared users, it depends. Windows 7 and 8 are different in their terminology. Um, and then is it into it? And QuickBooks, I really need to bring QuickBooks up to see that path. I would just do a search on the computer for whatever you called that document. But look in QuickBooks and see, do you have the little um, paper clip, you know, that shows that there's an attached document? That would be the first thing to look, to make sure it actually attached. Yes, but the one thing is it does not... Oh, Larry, we're it losing. It does, but it doesn't time. turn green. It's supposed to turn green, right? Green. The the oh. paper clip is supposed to turn green, right? So you think that there's something wrong, and it's not actually attaching the way that it should be? I need I need to attach something real quick. I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, QuickBooks up myself. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it sounds as if it's not working properly to begin with. Well, I think that if you try to open the attachment from QuickBooks, if it opens, then you know it worked, right? Right. Right. That's what I'm saying. Have you tried that, Larry, opening it directly from QuickBooks to see if it works there? Yes, that's the problem. I can't retrieve it in QuickBooks. So then and it's not actually um, open. So it doesn't turn green. Mine doesn't turn green. It just no? has a paper clip. No, it just has a paper clip there. And, like, I just attached something that I have saved up in SkyDrive. So because it's local, you can go, when you click Attach from Computer, you can then browse and pick anything anywhere, you know, that you can get access to. So I just pulled a document from SkyDrive and attached it. And then it just shows as a paper clip. It's just a regular, you know, gray paper clip. And if you click on the paper clip, it brings up your window that says attachments. And everything that's attached to that, I, I did to a customer, everything that's attached to that customer is listed in the box there below. So then you can just click on whichever document you want. Actually, if you double click on it, it'll then open the document. So the document can be anywhere. It can be SkyDrive, Dropbox, you know, whatever. Um, external drive, it doesn't matter. But then what? Okay. Quickbooks. Yeah, try going QuickBooks. Double go to whatever you know, customer vendor. Go to the paperclip. Paperclip. Double click. See if you don't get a window that pops up that shows everything you've attached. Okay. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. You also detach the same way, by the way. Okay. 
I'm I'm on the laptop now, and I don't have another monitor attached, so I'll do it later. <laughs> Okay. So, Rhonda, we've talked about your SEO. Roxanne, is there anything you would like to talk about today? Uh, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Okay. Tina? I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be happy, I'll be happy when my special project is done. It's I'm just tired. Are Let we, me know when that's done, by the way. I need to send you some stuff to fill out. Why? <laughs> she, she wants to be done. To be she doesn't done. want to fill out more stuff, Bruce. I was supposed to be done by the end of this week on this conservatorship, and I'm having a hard time working with the attorney's office because the gal I have to work with only works Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and <laughs> she's like, on this other project and it's just hard to get time from her and they go to court on the 29th of this month. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. I'm close, but you know, between the attorney's office and the client, it's just, I'm, it's piecemeal trying to get all the documents in and trying to get straight answers from the attorney's office. Evidently the attorneys have never done a conservatorship before. Awesome. So, this is, yeah, this is, you know, blind leading the blind leading the blind, and the poor clients are just stressed out, and I'm sure the woman's going to have an emotional breakdown in court if it gets postponed or delayed or whatever. It's just a sad, sad situation, so I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm just tired. <laughs> but there is light at the end of the tunnel, the end of... Hopefully, within the well, the 29th is the light. That's but you know, at this point, I can't see an end <laughs> until right. that day. Right. So I need to send my paperwork to you on the 30th then. <laughs> I don't know what paperwork you're talking about. I know you don't. <laughs> I am clueless. <laughs> no, it's not bad. I, it's not bad. I promise. If, as long as it's not bad and it's not brownies, I'm good. It's not bad and it's not brownies. Okay. However, I did put an order in for some oil yesterday. Some oil? Brownie oil? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's all I'm saying about that. <laughs> yep, that's all you need to say. I get it. <laughs> what are you up to, Gina? Oh, same old different day. I'm doing two hangouts today. Uh, running <laughs> out of topics on this one. I don't even know where I'm going to go with mine this afternoon. <laughs> well, it's well, still you're... early, so you might come up with something. <laughs> well, we Your talk afternoon about... one seems to always find a vein to go. It's it's it just works. So. We can talk about healthcare. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> If you would like. Well, we no, could. I don't. <laughs> I got, I got a, I got a package yesterday that I wasn't expecting, and it was the update to the healthcare package, and the instructions on what to do with the new material was empty out, throw away the entire old book that they printed in February because everything is new now. Everything has changed. Wow. I, oh my God, a 400-page note book. I think I showed it to you before, but they thick. <laughs> I had to throw that all away because they had changed the whole thing. And how many other people did they did that happen to and how many trees were killed for that reason? I, <laughs> <laughs> I still question the different color what did they call plans that they want you to use? The, the, the bronze, the silver, the gold, and the platinum? Right, right. Do you pay for these plans? I mean, if it were me, and I think about, you know, you got credit cards, you got the bronze, the silver, the platinum. Platinum's the best. I would automatically want the best, but that <laughs> may not necessarily be. Well, you pay more for it, so depending upon what level you choose, um, and your you know family situation or your personal situation, it, you can get quotes on each level. I shared on my business Facebook page 
the IRS had launched a, a page, a site, whatever you want to call it, I that kind of kind of helps guide people, individuals and businesses. I guess I can post that up here so you can get it. Yeah, I posted a question on that one for the Did you Google. Google Did you side. Think about the IRS. You almost need a bill if I answer that, right? No. Yeah, I know. I, I saw that post too. I, saw I chose that. not to like it. <laughs> I try to pay you in other ways with, you know, little bazingas here and there. <laughs> yeah, exactly my point. <laughs> Say, Bruce, did you see that thing about the IRS are sending out uh, letters on the K-1 saying that you're, you know... Like That's a, a topic for another McTax hangout. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying that Last year about those 1099Ks, I think this is only the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> yeah, the government needs money, so... Yep, yep. The first year the 1099Ks were supposed to come out, everybody realized they were jacked. I mean, and when I say everybody, <laughs> the IRS decided, okay, don't put it on your tax returns. <laughs> right, because, yep, yep. So here's the question then, because this has come up here recently. If you get the 1099 from PayPal and Amazon, and then you, you know, is the and, and no, I know the clients forget you know have them, but then you go in, and you look in their QuickBooks, and it doesn't match, and it doesn't match because Amazon and PayPal reports they suck. <laughs> what their sales report says, what their 1099 say, and what they send down from the site is all different. You know, there's all these timing issues. So, how you know if they only sell there, and their QuickBooks is say two thousand dollars under, do we have to just book that to revenue and just it's got to match? Even I know it's a. I think you just need to be able to explain it. You know, probably it's got sales tax included in the um, the Amazon. I would just be in a position where I could reconcile. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's all kinds of reconciliation things that you need to do. Cash back, all kinds uh, of things. But the there was a really good post. Right? There was a really good point. article on the Sleater Group blog about how to <laughs> do this. I wish I could remember exactly what the name of it was. So yeah, the problem is the class of money for that. It's just gross, right? It does. It includes the sales tax and it doesn't include the returns and allowances to the to the customers. Is that right? The returns and allowances, and what if the people get cash themselves? Like, you know how you go to... Um, but you would think the gross sales should match, with the exception of a little bit of a timing difference. Well, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, there are all kinds of scenarios that could happen. Um, someone else could use your... They gave the example of a spa, where the spa has a certain amount of money and they also bring in subcontractors who instead of getting paid use their POS system to get money from their clients. Okay. So that would severely inflate the gross uh, right. income. So I'm thinking more of just that's the only place they sell. Like it's just them and they're, they're only selling on Amazon. Right, or right, right, right. I, I, I can see what that would definitely mess up. <laughs> oh yeah, God. yeah. There's all kinds of stuff, and and like at the Giants or Acme's where they give people money. That's you know they go in and they get a hundred dollars worth of groceries and get fifty dollars back. That's considered gross. So, um, but the problem is the clients don't want to pay for the reconciliation until. You know it happens, so it's kind of hard to bill for it. Would you agree, Bruce? Yes. Yeah. They're not going to want to pay for uh, might happen in the future, and then when you have to go back and reconcile it, that's a real pain in the ass. And last year, you know, PayPal told a couple of my clients when they called, "Don't, it's wrong." They just told them flat out, "It's wrong," because their monthly reports that you get, you know, the monthly financial summary, and if you compare that with what comes down if you want to do the downloads, which you know that's all this garbage too. Against the 1099, you you've got three different numbers, and PayPal just says, "Yeah, we're working on it. We know it's a problem. It's wrong." <laughs> it's like, okay, 
So the IRS said that it's wrong, and now they've sent how many notices out? 20,000, I thought. 20-some-odd 20 thousand, yeah. Yeah, the problem is people are just going to panic what? and just cough up the money without even questioning it. Or yep. now the notices out that people owe more taxes? Well, they say there may be a problem with your reconciliation or your, you know, we've matched your K-1s versus what you reported, and what you reported is less than the K-1, so here's a discrepancy, please explain. And most people will probably just cough up the money to get them off their back. Well, the other thing that they were saying is it does not fit into our normal range. It does not tell you what the normal range for that business is, so people don't know how to respond to these notices also. Yeah, yes. and people don't talk to their accountants, so they just pay it, and then after the fact they tell you, and it's like, oh, okay, now let's get the money back if we can. Right. Well, I've got a guy now that has accountants fighting it because they got the whole normal range thing because they said that their cash receipts wasn't high enough for his industry. He's flipping 100% internet. So the cash receipts, cash, cash, is very small. Most of it's credit card. Right. And they can't get it through the IRS that it's, you know, it's there. It's in the credit card stuff. It's not in cash. They're, they're, the IRS is convinced that they're skimming, you know, skimming the money. So they've been almost a year now fighting this. <laughs> That's a shame. Is there a place? Is there a place to go to find out what the IRS says thinks is normal for a particular industry? Well, I think that that, in a nutshell, would be the problem. That there yeah. is not a place that you can go to find out where think, their, what their algorithm or or. No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't tell you. They would not tell you that. I figured. Would be shame <laughs> in it if they they told you that. Bruce, we should find your hangout where Jan explain, explained all of this. I'm working on that, actually, as we speak. <laughs> you know, what's really bad is if you get caught up in one of these audits where, you're, where they're trying to get the, the data. I mean, they kind of go with the fine-tooth comb when they're trying to get their data for their algorithms. And you right. could get caught up in one of those kind of audits, which is not very pleasant. I have a couple people going through that, you know, for the, over the last couple of years. So just, it's crazy. And, you know, if you go and you look at what's coming in from, I mean, everything's right, everything ties, but the IRS just comes up with this crap. And then you've got this 1099 garbage, you know, and most of the time it's totally explainable if you sit and think about it rationally with timing and you look at the whole picture. But they don't look at the whole picture. They look at one thing. Right. You know? Right. Frustrating. And I'm not an accountant, so I don't get into uh, that. But, you know. Gina. Yes. Here is the uh, link to where Jan did her little spiel. Okay. Roxanne, I think you're going to find that very helpful. I will put that in the links at the end. You know, as a, as a practical matter, if you get a lot of uh, deposits going into your bank account that are not income, you better be able to document that because if they ever audit you, they assume any deposits income unless you prove otherwise. Yep. Right. And right. yeah, tell everybody that. Voluntary system, you have to be able to prove what you're saying. And you yeah. can't tell you to prove your right. They were going to be talking about schedule. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that sounded familiar. I couldn't wait. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know that was trippy. I heard Bruce and his lips weren't moving. I thought, has he got a dummy around there somewhere? <laughs> oh, throwing his voice to my computer. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Shelly Robbins trying to join. Maybe we'll get oh. to see her. Yeah, Shelly's a friend of mine. Say hi to her. We've got a blank screen. There she is. Hello. Hey, Shelly. Hey, hey Shelly. Don't to unmute, young lady. We're talking about. We're trying to talk about zero, but no one wants to talk about zero. <laughs> The floor is yours, Dennis. We can well, talk about zero. I like yeah. talking about zero. Yeah, I'd be happy to talk about that. Shelly, why don't you talk been... about the uh, hangout we had yesterday with zero? Oh, sure. That's a great thing to talk about, the bug that we found. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, so it, it turns out that the instructions on the importing of PayPal and, uh, isn't exactly right. Uh, so they're going to rewrite them. It it works like the first two times, but then it kind of hangs up the uh, the programming. So um, they're going to change the instructions. But I was really stubborn and 
spent a lot of time figuring out, you know, I must be doing it wrong before we well, was, got to that point. I was telling people, zero, even though I still support QuickBooks, but I figure that I like zero a lot better than QuickBooks Online in terms of the uh, stability. And when you say the stability, come on, let's um, explain a little bit more, Dennis. Okay, for example... <laughs> don't yeah, we want the devil's cut, Dennis. <laughs> for example, on QuickBooks Online, half the time I got browser problems where it can't find the company or it's not available. I had a case where it wasn't avail it's available on one computer but not on the other. On the other one, it wasn't available in Chrome, but it was available in uh, Explorer. And then I have had problems with connecting with the bank accounts because the bank feeds don't seem to want to work very well. Or you have to. The thing is, you have to spend your time, money, and energy, to figure, you know, sort these problems out. With with zero, I've had no trouble with getting funky messages or um, connecting with bank accounts. And so it just seems like it's a lot more stable system to me, based on my experience. The other thing that I discovered was the free customer portal. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, mm -hmm. So your customers can have a free portal to stay, save their bills in. Uh, so when, when you send them the bill, they can either just pay it online or they can click the Save button, which will create a free account. And then from that point forward, all their old bills will be saved in this little email spot. And any ones that haven't been paid will sort of pop up at them when they log into that account. I think it's something that really hasn't been mentioned in the cloud accounting comparisons. Well, I've noticed on the bank recs that with QuickBooks Online, for example, when you go and reconcile and it's uh, matching, when you click on the link, it doesn't really tell you what it's being, account it's being assigned to, and so you have to accept it, then go back and figure out if the client did it right. Yeah, and definitely. it seems like you have to do it individually, clicking, whereas with cash coding and zero, you just you can do tons of, you know, at the same time. Whereas with QuickBooks Online, you can sort it and then you can check each one individually. And then uh, up at the top, it will have like uh, accept selected. But it seems like you have to code each one individually. Right. That's been, my, that's been my, just not as elegant as what I've seen. It's a little more cumbersome. And that adds up when you're trying to save time. Or just working with it. Yeah. So people have lots and lots of transactions every month in their checking account. Yeah, and also with uh, zero, you can, if you have like past, if the client hasn't reconciled their bank in a year, you can import uh, a CSV, get a CSV file from the bank for up to 18 months. Oh, and, nice. And import it in, and it'll just, it works really slick. Uh, QuickBooks Online, I believe you have to have a third party application to uh, import a CSV file, I believe. I don't, I don't know. TPI. I, I maybe not with QuickBooks Online. I think you can do a CSV, but I don't think you can do a CSV to banks for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah, you can't do it to banks. That's for sure. Right. That's what I was trying to say. Right. You know. And so, when you import from your bank from the bank feeds, does Zero work better than QuickBooks Online? QuickBooks Online, a lot of the banks will only bring in the checks with checks in the name and therefore it can't find who the last checks was associated with so you actually if, if a check is written outside of the system a handwritten check and it's on the bank statement and you're pulling it into QuickBooks Online you don't have that detail information. That I'm not sure of. Um... With zero. I, I, with zero, you can have bank rules, so you can set up logic. So for you know subsequent transactions, it'll it'll fit the rules and it'll automatically you know post it to that account. And it, I guess it can be either or, and or or type logic where you can have different conditions. But my question is, does it read the checks that were? written outside of the system and bring it into zero via the bank. I'm not sure. What do you th what do you think, Shelley? Well, I mean, it would just bring it in as a transaction, a check, an amount, and a date. And does it bring in the name? Would have name on it. I'm not sure if it does or not. I don't, I don't think so. I really don't because there's Probably this matching not. process that's actually kind of slick too. Yeah. Uh, 
So well, I don't think so. Do you guys have Matthew access buses? to a demo company in Zero? Oh yeah, you so get a demo company automatically. Does it do the batch feed or the bank feed rather? Well, it's got oh, it basically demo. refreshes every 30 days, I think, but it's got a simulated. I mean, it's got a simulated bank where you can go in and match. I mean, that's the from what I've seen on the on the demo company. Okay, because I was curious if it would show you know that level of detail or not. I think Shelly's probably more knowledgeable about Zero. I think she's used it more than I have. She's shaking her head. Just, no. just barely, just barely. You know, <laughs> since I, I really had so much to learn, what I decided to do was sort of pull together webinars with the Zero um, team. So we've had three in a row now with our meetup group where we've had somebody who really knows Zero well who's on staff there helping us out. I kind of got the sense they're kind of trying to scale back on them unless we get them some clients. Did you get that sense? <laughs> well, every every week I have to I have to beg them to do another week with us. No, they've never done it before, uh, where they're just sort of holding our hands and asking our answering our questions, just for our little group. Uh, but I think it's a really good idea. I think they should keep doing it. So I'll just keep pushing it. I think we're giving them good feedback on some of the you know some suggestions. Well, especially yeah. in these kinds of forums. I mean, you guys are getting the word out. And you're actually using it. You have, you know, positive things to say about it. You've used QBO and desktop, and you can kind of do some comparison. And yeah. I think that's positive for them to continue to support you guys that way. They've also had a uh, summer camp, and they've had some pretty. They had a really good one yesterday on uh, presenting to clients. And um, on Vime, it's V I M E O. They have a channel where they have like some couple hundred videos and so they will put them they'll put those out there so you can watch them I've seen some were like on virtual CFOs and um, marketing and that kind of stuff and social media so there's a lot of, there's a ton of stuff they don't really advertise the the Vimo channels though for some so, reason so the social media and the marketing ones are they using zero or is it just simply on social media and marketing I haven't looked at that one yet um, what I've I've been on accounting one they had like accounting 101 and um, finance and what I've asked for is a slide deck so hopefully they'll give me the PowerPoint so I can kind of you know cut and paste and create my own presentation for you know doing marketing because they had some really good slides on the um, on the um, the finance so it's funny the first time she did the presentation she didn't share a screen and so she had to redo the whole thing, uh, but it was, only, it was only like a half hour presentation, so it kind of fit within my time budget, but that was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> Shelly's the queen. I'm playing. <laughs> so can you convert something to zero? Can you convert a cookbook online or a cookbook desktop up to zero? Yeah, they have a, they use a third party. I think they charge $200, but you might be able to get it waived in some cases. You know, I was watching one of their webinars for newbies, uh, like accountants and bookkeepers, and that partnership program you were telling me about. I don't know, right. last week I think. And right. they said that it, um, they in their demo, they they showed a list of all the different softwares that they can convert or integrate with. I can't remember how he termed it, but Intuit was not one of them. So um, I'm wondering well, I, if those other. I had my file converted. I had my QuickBooks desktop file converted to zero. But you had to pay for it. Well, they no. they did it for free. No. You know, okay. Well, they did it for free for you, or do yeah. they do it free for everybody? You know. I think because I was an advisor, they did it for me free personally. But I normally they charge a one ninety nine. Well, I think the verbiage that the dude said in his little spiel, and and I had to go back, I think twice to listen to it. He said, and we integrate with all U.S. I think it was um, bank or not bank software. Um, accounting software like and then you, it showed a list of all these but I didn't see Intuit on there so that's why I was curious about the integration if it really was something you know, available. You to convert your so, file. Can I jump in there because it's, sure. um, it's my understanding $8. that if we want any of our clients files our own file converted from QuickBooks to Zero, that they'll do it for us for free. Um, there's a conversion form, so you sort of fill out this form about like what's your start date, what you know, what what do you want the conversion to start at, um, and a few other um, and some information about like prepping the file, and then you submit that, and then it takes 
two to three days to get the file back unless there's data integrity problems. There likely will be data integrity problems. Anything QuickBooks related <laughs> seems to always have data integrity problems. Well, hopefully you've got the file like you know all cleaned up, and and they suggest having your bank recs up to date, etc., before you do the conversion. It's actually a pretty decent form, um, and I think I could post it up here on this Google thing that I'm still trying to figure out how it works. Isn't there a place where I can post things on here? Okay, yeah. Good, yeah. Move okay. down on the left, hit your chat, and then... Yeah, just copy the URL in the chat. Right. Uh, okay, I think I got it. I'll give that a try. Okay, great. And Tina, didn't you have issues with, like, entering information? Uh, yeah, we talked about the register yesterday, and did you get the sense that it wasn't a high priority, Shelley? Like a bank register? That a bank register wasn't a high priority? Yeah, did you get that sense? I got the sense they're going to do ma they're doing some things, but I didn't know if they're going to do it exactly as a bank register. Yeah, I don't know. That's the thing that I, I, I have a hard time getting past, that there isn't like a regular bank register. And that's, that's why I haven't moved forward. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got clients that, for whatever quirky, odd reason, they just do not want to set up online banking to integrate with, you know, their QuickBooks files. So they just, they send me, you know, a physical paper copy or they PDF it to me and email it. Um, and I just have to physically manually enter all this information. And I'm not going to do, you know, journal postings to try and post all this stuff. I'm not going to enter it as a bill and then pay it as a, you know, bill payment and then have to adjust the checks. I mean, that's just so much more work. And so that's what's really keeping me from jumping ship, basically, and going over to zero. The registers like, have to have that. Say that again, Roxanne. Roxanne, we lost you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, the register is definitely a must have. You know, you have a lot of the same things where you're going back and bringing things up to date, and I'm not going through and doing it with journal entries or enter bill paper garbage, you know. And you're talking about a check register, right? Yeah, exactly. And I'm getting the impression that there's there's so much to zero, and there's this. Uh, journal that they use and there's uh, there's they have when you ask a question like to Eileen she's got a really good answer for how you go about doing things and it's really I'm getting the impression that I really have to just think of changing the way I go about doing things but I just can't get past looking at a list of transactions in a check register and not seeing a balance next to it right Absolutely. are we ever going to get those videos from zero maybe we could share them with the group once we get them the Supposedly they recorded our sessions. I have at least one of them, and I haven't posted it up yet, so the answer is yes. Okay. I've got to go. My, da my daughter's going to – I got to accompany my daughter to uh, her appointment. She's driving, so I'm sort of looking forward to that. Oh, good. <laughs> Enjoy this. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, 15 and a half going on 20, and uh, uh. <laughs> she's, uh, she wants to drive, and she's driving the minivan. So uh, fortunately it has her as airbags, so <laughs> <laughs> she says I'm not going to crash it. Okay, Hopefully I'm, I'm coming, too much Tina. Caffeine. Okay, bye bye. Yeah, bye. Your time's coming, Tina. Huh? Your time is coming. She has a little while yet, though. You know, I tell you, this kid, she is four, going on fourteen. She is really mature. <laughs> I mean, she's acting like a teenager, and we're not even there yet. Yeah, but she can't reach the pedals yet. Well, that's true. <laughs> Shelly, can I post this link in the description of the Hangout? Yeah, yeah. Did I not post it in the right spot? No, you, no, you did. did. You oh, did. Yeah. At the end, when it's all said and done, I usually post links, and I wanted to make sure you were aware of that. Yeah, so you might want to add the word. Away. I didn't say it was for zero conversion, so I should, maybe you want to put okay. that in there. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So just about ready. Uh, we are just about done for the day. Is there anything anyone would like to talk about before we leave? Any did comments? You guys, did you notice the, the tour, the QBO tour that's going all across the nation? Yes. I'm on the East Coast, so mine's not actually officially um, written in stone yet. 
Um, no, it, it is. There's a special link that has all of the dates on it. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe I should put that up there, too. <laughs> Let me see if I can dig that out. Okay. I, awesome. I look for Philadelphia, um, and supposedly it's actually Halloween for May, and I posted to Stacy, oh, good, I'll get to see you on Halloween. And she Dress came up. back and said, no, I will be here with trick-or-treating with my children, which, you know, good for her. Hooray. I'm glad that she's putting her family first. I just didn't know what, exactly what that meant. Well, there's quite a few trainers, so and they're splitting them up all over the place. Okay, okay. You're in Philadelphia. Let me see if I can figure out where you're going to be when your date is. Yeah, I think that when I looked it up, it was um, Halloween, October 31st. Wow. When you get to the page that has the list of um, dates on it, there's a, a link on the right that says, don't see your area, and then you click on that, and it'll right. take you on Right, and that's okay. where I found that. And, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think Stacy had said something about they only post four weeks out, and so since that's further than that, you know. Bruce, what's happening? Looks like you're falling asleep. No, nah, just pondering my issue. <laughs> I wasn't You're ready for, for an my, accountant. I wasn't. I wasn't ready for my staff accountant to put in her notice. Oh no! <laughs> I got one more week though, so I I got a day or two. You got to figure out what to do. Yep. One that's been with you for a while. Huh? One that's been with you for a while. How long has she been with you? Here, Roxy. How long has she been with you? Uh, nine months. Is that right? Something that can be done virtually. Well, that's one of the things I'm going to be pondering. Because if it can, I have several people I would like to pawn it off to. What a way to put it. Pawn it off. To. <laughs> it doesn't make it sound like it's something anybody wants. No, you it's, work your marketing there, dude. No, it's 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 not like that. It's I'm I'm I focus on tax stuff. I mean that's I don't want to do accounting, so to me it's pawning the accounting work off. <laughs> and and wasn't she in charge of the QuickBooks online? Yes. She was, so she was it's kind very of proficient with QBO. Virtually Ooh, that hurts. Right. So, do what? That's kind of set up for virtual anyway. Well, I mean, that is. Right? I have a lot of clients. Well, I say a lot. Three. Huh? Use your little Trello program. I don't use Trello. I thought you did. No, I'm signed up for it. I just don't use it because, <sighs> and I still can't figure it out. I can't remember, but there was something about Trello that I didn't like. And I've decided I would revisit it, but I just haven't gotten there yet. Well, maybe now's the time. Yeah, I know. Okay. Don't rush at me, Gina. <laughs> I'm sorry. You got a week. What am I supposed to say? <laughs> You're supposed to say ignore it. It'll be. It'll work itself out. Don't fret about it. <laughs> Eat a brownie. It'll be fine. <laughs> I really don't want to end the show on that note. No, 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 no. That would be that would be wrong. <laughs> if I was in California, I would go surfing because then I would just have a nice, clear, calm view of what to do. Well, don't think about it emotionally. Think about it realistically. And oh, I am. I've got. I have I have several clients that have us do their bookkeeping, accounting, whatever you want to deal with it, and they're not they don't want it online. They don't want me to big resistance to the cloud. There is. There, I mean. Are they older folks? Oh yeah. Okay, that explains it. Um, well, in, in part, the ones it's resistant too, not just so, older ones. So if I was to get somebody virtually. I would have to set up uh, a 
so that they could log into my computer here. Cloud nine, and you don't like Cloud nine. Ah, uh, no. Cloud nine. See, I if, if the. I hate to say it, but I'm going to turn into Adrian. I think I have my own little puffy white cloud. Well, at least you have someone that can help you. Yes. And he, he offers it to his clients, and I'm... Can I call you back in like I'm, five minutes? I'm just finishing up a web I'm not sure I'm going to offer it to clients, but I'm going to have okay, it so I can that. have virtual okay, people okay. such as Tina helping me. Uh-oh, Tina, I hear some work coming your way. Yeah, I think I understand what the paperwork's coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it is business-related, but not like that. Oh, so it must be S-Corp stuff. Yes. All right. <laughs> okay, everybody. Uh, there, is that better? <laughs> <laughs> On this note, we will end the accountants, bookkeepers, and business owners hangout. So have Thanks a good week, you. everyone. Have a good weekend. Thanks for being here, guys. Great job. Bye. 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 Thanks, Tina.